everyone. Today's session is on managing vin um, central venous access devices. And we'll be looking at several access devices today. We will be looking first and foremost at the portal cap. I know you can't see it under the rubber nipple here on my mannequin. However, if I can just pull that back so that you have a good look at the portal cap. Typically, this is where a portal cap would sit on a person um, and you would see the light rim of the portocath pulled across the skin um, so it will be easily identifiable uh, from your perspective and please remember that human skin is slightly thinner than rubber so your portocath will be a lot more visible the second thing i'm going to be looking at is how to manage a midline or hickman line pick line um, and it's just thinking about measuring the line to make sure that it's not traveling making sure the dressing is intact investigating vip scores visible insertion sites um, and that kind of a thing we'll touch briefly on that um, again, for the purposes of managing our lines today and the activities that we're going to do, you will need the following. Obviously, you will need the attachment that you'll need to connect to the portal cath to be able to flush this safely. And it is what we call a Gripper Plus needle. And you can either get them in a neutral color or a yellow color in terms of that bung. Um, a bag of normal saline. I've got 100 mils because I will be drawing up several mils of saline and using them to flush um, both central venous access devices. Um, a filter needle, or if you cannot get a filter needle, you can use a green or blue needle because they have micropores small enough not to allow glass particles um, to pass through. Alternatively, you could just use a drawing up needle as we're not popping glass ampules for any of today's practice. Again, you need to consider having the skin preparation um, products as well as the medical device preparation products to decontaminate the hubs of the ports that you'll be using today. Um, I've also got an IV line which will allow us to infuse our normal saline. Some syringes, assorted syringes. And I've got both your... Um, lure lock as well as your needle free syringes just to make sure that I can use them for the different access points that I will be using today. I've also got a swung lock bung. These are quite useful especially maybe where you have a device that does not have a needle free device at the end of it. You can insert this and this will facilitate or support needle free care. Alternatively you can also use the needle free device here that is the typical one that you would find in community services for pick lines or hickman lines or midlines. Now the thing to highlight is the devices that we're using today are pretty much long-term devices. Your portal cats can stay in for up to six months and your pick lines can stay in anything from six to 12 months. So these are quite long-term devices, typically used for IV administration or fluid replacement, that kind of a thing. Now all our devices are managed using the process of aseptic non-touch technique. There's no specific or special devices, uh, special process for managing central venous access devices. Be it a cannula, be it a portocath, be it a pick line, you would use the same aseptic non-touch technique in terms of managing them. I would also need an IV dressing pack in case I'm changing the dressing. However, at this point in time, as long as my dressing is clean and dry and intact and my insertion site is visible and accessible, no swelling or redness, I'm happy to proceed and not change the dressing at this point. Right, as per usual, I'm going to decontaminate my hands. Good hand hygiene is key. Fingers, fingers, wrists and wrists. Bare below the elbows, ready to start the process of actually flushing or preparing to flush my devices. First and foremost, I'm going to open up my normal saline. Uh, and key to opening this up um, is first and foremost, I need to be able to sort of check that it's currently in date. Now, all bags of saline for this year will be 2020 
one. However, 2021 bag, 100 mils of normal saline, checking the batch number to make sure that it's in date, checking that it's got no particulates within the bag, just squeezing it real quickly to make sure that it's got no leaks or it hasn't been punctured anywhere. Obviously, you don't want to use a bag that has already been tampered with. Um, and it shouldn't be cloudy with precipitate in it or any foreign bodies in it. Um, it should be very clear and easy to access and you should have a sealed um, cap at the end of the bag to demonstrate that it hasn't been tampered with. Next things next, I am going to um, open up my drapes. My dressing pack that I have in the community. I think the key point here is just to think about creating an aseptic field. Now, depending upon the position of your patient, if they are seated, then you can make sure that your device is lined up with the drape or in the drape so that you maintain the management of your venous access devices within the aseptic field. I'm also gonna need my clinical waste bag and a little tape measure that allows me to know that I've checked and marked the position of my pick line. Right, I always check before just so that I have a rough idea and I always check after to make sure that as I've um, flushed or tampered with my line, it hasn't moved from where I started off. I'm gonna pop on my gloves. Just do it. So I usually start off from where the actual line starts off instead of where the bung start off because then that's a false sort of reflection of what the actual line is. So my line currently is at 12.5 centimeters and I'm going to mark that on my pen. And I'm going to put the date for today. So it's the 7th of the 5th when I've checked it and that's the 24th. 2020 and my name and details and my patient ID and name right next things next just having a quick look to see whether this is dirty and I'm going to need to clean it yes I would always use the chlorhexidine and alcohol wipe for medical devices for this process. And basically the process is to get right round the hub and sort of in a clockwise and anti-clockwise action, scrub the hub for 30 seconds approximately. So 30 seconds, scrub the hub. I would also move along the line to make sure that I've cleaned that as well. Sometimes you get lines that look a little bit mucky because of the dressing. I might just clean that as well. And then I'm going to let that dry for 20 to 30 seconds. So I know that I've decontaminated the hub. The next thing I'm going to do is prepare to actually flush the line so that I know that it is patent.
And for this, I'm going to use a drawing up needle. Like I said, if I was using glass ampules, I would use a filter needle. However, in this situation, I'm going to use my drawing up needle as my glass ampule is not being used. Going to draw up 10 mils of saline, which is what I will need for the flush. making sure that I'm clearing all air bubbles. Often the question I'm asked is how much air can go into the patient? Now the answer to that question is no air should go in the patient. It is not to say that the air is harmful in and of itself, it's just to think that it is more likely to cause an air emboli if it's a very large air bubble and alternatively it is also thinking about um, the fact that um, if it's medication and you've got a large air bubble, it just implies that you're underdosing the patient at that point in time. Now, I prefer to use sterile clean gauze for this process just to hold on to my device, connect my syringe to my needle free device, unclamp, and use the push pause action to flush 10 mils of fluid into my line. Push pause serves to create turbulence in the line, which clears away any fibrin that might be attached to line. So last push and clamp so that I end on positive pressure. So that argues about how you would flush or maintain a pick line. Now my pick line is ready for administration of medications. It's been flushed and it's ready to go. Typically, a question that's commonly asked by a lot of people is, do you draw back on the first attempt? So I might draw back to see whether I've got some blood coming through initially. Um, however, if there was no blood coming through that line, I would attempt to flush. And if it was flushing clearly and there were no signs of occlusion, then that line would still be painted. Things to observe is that I haven't got any redness tracking upwards on the line as well as making sure that there are no bulges happening as i'm flushing demonstrating that my fluid is no longer in the vein but going into the tissues right now we're going to focus on managing a podocat so again first things first i'm going to conduct a quick assessment of my patient's venous access device so to do that i'm going to just um, decontaminate my hands real quickly Pop on my gloves. Run a quick assessment just to frame the porter cap so that I know roughly where I'm going for. Right. Making sure that the skin is secure, I'm going to use my Chloroprep to clean the skin so that I'm decontaminating the skin of any bacteria that might be sitting on that. Quick dab, and once again, a cross hatch action up and down and across, just to make sure I'm getting through the layers of skin for that. Excellent. So that's nicely de decontaminated 30 seconds and allowing that to dry for 30 seconds. Whilst that's drying, I'm going to take the initiative to draw some saline for my flush. Need approximately 10 mils. Standard flush for adults will always be 10 mils. And in terms of how you can use that, you can use 5 mils and 5 mils. Just taking my sharps device and just getting rid of that. I'm just going to make sure I get rid of any air bubbles.
Right, I'm going to open my access device and um, just put that um, on the end for now, um, just so that when I'm flashing, that's ready to go. Um, second thing to sort of think about is I might just want to flush that line through before I actually connect it to the patient. So just flushing, just giving a gentle flush for that. Then just making sure I've clamped. And now this is ready to install for the patient. Again, I'm going to frame that, remove my sheath. Frame that nicely for the patient without contaminating the area I've just cleaned. Gently introducing the needle to the middle of the portal cap to give it a flush. I'm going to release my clamp and once again take on the push pause technique for flushing. And this is flushing quite easily as you can see. Push pause, push pause, push pause, push pause, push pause, push, pause, push, pause, push, pause. Again, I'm flushing in about 10 mils. Push, clamp on positive pressure. Now, if I needed to insert my medications, I would sort of attach my needle free device to get ready for medic medication insertion. Just going to remove my syringe and attach that needle free device in preparation to administer medications. That way I kept it none touch and then I can then scrub the hub and give my medications as needed by the patient or if it's just for maintenance and flushed then I've done that. With these portal cats you would flush them once every four to six weeks. Okay? And that pretty much would ensure that they maintain patent for when you're not using them for medication. And then once you're ready to maintain, um, to administer medication, again, you still flush and then give your medication and flush after you've administered your medication. Once I'm done with that, I'm not going to leave this on the patient because obviously it's going to be very uncomfortable when they put their clothes on. It doesn't allow for them to conduct their ADLs without uh, any problems. So I'm just going to remove that. Again, I will frame this neatly and pull out my needle gently so that it doesn't cause the patient any discomfort and dispose of this immediately into the sharps bin.